Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Devlogged. This is the show where I take a look at in-progress, independent games through their development logs. This week on Devlogged, we're going to take a look at three games that are in early development, no playable demos this time, just loads of good information in the forms of videos and screenshots. Hopefully you'll like what you see, maybe you'll choose to follow one of these games. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get things started. We're going to lead off this time with Maze. According to the developer, Maze is a puzzle-solving oriented adventure game with a large non-linear world and handcrafted dungeons. Now that sounds pretty darn good, and you would expect handcrafting because it is puzzle-oriented. So if you're going to have a lot of puzzles, these puzzles have to be controlled. So we're not talking about another roguelike here. We're talking about a game that is purpose-built to have complex and interesting puzzles. As you're seeing the graphics flash on your screen, I think it's clear where the inspiration for this game lies. I'm envisioning games like uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Also thinking about games like Illusion of Gaia. Those other action-oriented RPGs from the Super Nintendo era. Not your JRPG type stuff, but your action stuff. And really, it seems like this game is, uh, is evoking a lot of that. And it's trading on a lot of that nostalgia. I think that's a great thing, if done well. And so far, the indicators are that the game is being done pretty darn well. It's been interesting to watch it in development, because the developers have actually seeked out the guidance of other members of the TIG Source forums in their devlog. And it's been great to see them trading back and forth, taking constructive criticism, and making their game better. That's a lesson that a lot of people need to learn in this life. Constructive criticism is a fantastic thing. Throw yourself down at the feet of people who are more experienced and smarter than you, and you will come away with a lot of valuable knowledge. Don't be afraid to put your work out there and accept the faults. Accept the faults, make the work better. That's exactly what they're doing with this game, and I think it's going to be a better game in the end. Maze's early development is focusing on the thief character named Elza. So this character is going to be your first character. She is one of four characters. As the story goes, these four adventurers, the witch, the dwarf, the knight, and the thief, went into the maze to retrieve a giant diamond. Behind this diamond lived an ancient evil called the Wanderer. He put these heroes to the test and they failed. They were turned to stone and only the thief escaped. So you're starting out as the thief, delving back down into the maze, trying to free your compatriots. The current plan is that in the second stage of development, these three additional characters will be added. They'll bring with them unique abilities, and while one can speculate on what that might mean, the developers really don't say. So perhaps the knight will be a little more effective in direct combat. Maybe the witch will have projectile magic. It can maybe alter the game slightly, or alter the game quite a lot. Or it could be a Lost Vikings or Trine sort of thing where... You need the knight in order to get to this part of the map, almost in a sort of Metroidvania style. You can't get here until you have the witch, because the witch can hover. Now that's all complete and total speculation, but the possibilities are there, and I think it makes for a really deep game, and it creates potential replay value for the game itself. You go through most of the levels, free your compatriots, then go back and fill in the gaps to 100% the game. Sounds like a pretty good strategy to me, and something that I'm really looking forward to. So there you have it, folks. That is Maze. Check the description below for the links to the TIG Source forum post, as well as all other relevant information on what looks to be a promising action overhead Legend of Zelda style puzzle solving RPG. For our next game, let's keep it in the dungeons, but let's go in a completely different direction with Crawl. Crawl is described by the developers as an arcadey beat em up dungeon crawler, except it's multiplayer and the monsters are all controlled by other players. Let me just say that again it's a dungeon crawler, arcade style beat em up where you play the hero and up to three of your friends play the enemies trying to stop you. So, how does something as outlandish as that even work? Well, here's what we know so far details are sketchy, the game's in early development, right? One player's playing as the hero, three players playing in local co-op as the enemies. What's the object for the enemies? 
fly around as ghosts, inhabit different creatures, try to kill the hero. If you kill the hero, you become the hero. As the hero, you're trying to get all that loot, get powered up, and fight the final dungeon boss. When you arrive at the dungeon boss, your enemies, your three friends controlling the enemies, actually control different aspects of the same boss. Somebody might move his legs, somebody might move his arms, and somebody might shoot fire from his anus. That sounds pretty crazy. Now, all of this is kind of undefined at this point, but the possibilities are great. You can tell that I'm excited. The only problem, I gotta go out and make three friends actually to be able to play the game. Maybe eventually some sort of a network solution will come, especially if the game makes its way to Steam. But right now we're talking about local co-op and we're talking about a game that has amazing possibilities. So if information is a little bit sketchy right now, what do they have? Pixel art. They have some of the most amazing lo-fi pixel art that I have seen in a long, long time. You're now seeing a parade of characters walking back and forth showing you exactly what this game has to offer. Great, great looking pixel art, tight animations, really great characters. Crawl is a game you wanna keep your eyes on, folks. Please check the description below for all the relevant links and make sure that you are following the progress of Crawl. So now let's move from the ancient dungeons to the far-flung future where there's only war, glorious turn-based war. This is Halfway. Halfway is described by the developers as a turn-based strategy game taking place a few hundred years in the future. At the heart of the game are tactical gunfights. Battles are conducted in a typical turn-based manner with transparent but interesting tactical decisions. The whole game is entrenched in an engrossing storyline that unfolds more and more the deeper the player gets into the game. Now that certainly sounds pretty interesting, but how do you sum this game up in a couple of words? XCOM Jagged Alliance. Period. Much like Maze before it, Halfway is trading on that iterative nostalgia. It's a turn-based game, something that is very dear to my heart, having played a lot of Jagged Alliance and even some of the original XCOM and now, of course, Enemy Unknown as well. Yeah, I like what I see. I definitely like what I see. The interesting thing about this is that what you see is kind of a reset version of this game. There's a great write-up on their website about how the game came to be. So they started out the game and it kind of got bloated. It was functional but not fun, as they say. They hit the reset button, they boiled the game down to its basic functions, they focused the game, and they made what seems to be an absolutely spectacular looking title. So you're gonna have the tactical turn-based gameplay, of course the XCOM style, you move, the enemy moves, that sort of thing. But then on top of that, they're layering an in-depth storyline. What they've released so far about the storyline is that things start out kind of shitty. You wake up in the Goliath, which is your ship. It's been taken over or attacked violently. You don't really know what's going on. Alarms are going off. There are busted cryo chambers, but luckily one of your teammates has survived. You free him and you go forward. You face your fears. You fight this unknown alien species, all in the name of survival. The game unfolds like this. You learn exactly what's happened. The story progresses and it just sounds great at this point. Game is still in really early development, so there's not a whole lot to show. There are some really sort of samey looking screenshots because it is a turn-based game. So there's a lot of screenshots of guys standing there with a menu popped out, selecting an action. The current tile set that they seem to have is the early stuff in the game, the Goliath. There is a screenshot or two out there of a more of like a deserty sort of tile set, but a lot of what you're gonna see uh, looks the same, but don't take that uh, to mean that the game is lacking variety. It's progressing, it's still in its early stages, it's moving forward slowly but surely, it's getting a lot of attention, and I think Halfway has a huge amount of potential. If you like turn-based gameplay, if you like sci-fi, if you like story-based games, then I think this is gonna be a game to watch, most certainly. I know it's on my short list of games that I am looking forward to in 2014, and I hope that maybe this has inspired you to put it on yours as well. All the relevant information, of course, is in the description below. So there you have it, guys. That's going to do it. Three more in-development, independent games, which I believe to be worthy of your attention. As always, if you are a developer or you know of a game that should be featured on this show, please let me know. Head over to BigDavisCheap.com where all of my relevant contact information can be found. Thank you so much for watching another episode of DevLog. I have been Big Dave, and until next time... 
take it easy.